So I engage with customers in the EMEA region. Uh, we talk a lot about AI. And one of the questions that really comes to service is to say, okay, what's the impact of AI for leadership? And what does good leadership look like? So with that, we commissioned research with you in partnership. Heike Broeg, who is the professor of leadership at the University of St. Gallen in Switzerland. And you actually interviewed leaders about how they're personally going to use AI, but also about the leadership in the times of AI and the impact of their organization. So what were your observations talking to all these leaders? Uh, one of the most striking observations was that there's a fundamental difference between high growth companies and leaders in low growth companies. Mm -hmm. And um, leaders in high growth companies use AI um, much more extensively already today than leaders in low growth companies. Yeah. One characteristic of this study is that we didn't focus on the impact of AI on lower level jobs, yeah. but we focus on the question how senior executives yes. actively use it as an instrument to support their own uh, tasks. Yes, yes, yes. And, and what surprised you the most in this research? Most surprising uh, was for me um, that senior executives plan to use AI to free up time for leadership. Mm, okay. Leadership meaning um, time that they want to spend on motivating and inspiring uh, people in their organization. And is that a, a good idea? I think this is a very, very smart idea because um, Quite a number of, of um, top managers, even top managers, feel like busy managers um, whose time is absorbed with very uh, operational tasks. Yeah, yeah. And if they are using AI to, uh, to free time for a real uh, people-related tasks, so a human-centered task, I think this is what, exactly what is needed going forward. Yeah, yeah, okay. In your work, you're talking also about the acceleration trap. Exactly, right. yeah. And is that correlated if you think about that busy manager being more busy, busy, busy and accelerating to, uh, you know, to where? Busy managers cause uh, uh, the acceleration trap. 50% of the companies are in an overheated mode. Huh? In a mode where they're operating at the limits, have too many activities and don't have enough time to make the right choices. Does that match your observation? Yes, uh, I think there are a few things to mention. First of all, I think there was a recognition by many leaders that that you can augment the capabilities of AI with, with human traits, if you think about empathy, if you think about innovation, if you think about energy, and of course that having an impact on the organization and being more competitive and what have you. I think the second thing is that um, a lot of leaders thinking about their role in the world of AI, moving from being a manager to be more a mobilizer, because how do you mobilize these things? And how do you cut through the hierarchy? How do you cut through, you know, always having the right answers first to say, what are the right questions to ask in the world of AI? And I think um, that in the construct of um, cultural change. So, you know, if you think about moving from a knowing it all company to a learning all company, that's super critical if you think about AI and how do you implement AI in your organization? So are you really that learner that understands it? And not understanding the algorithms or the myth that you need to be a data scientist, that's what I'm not right. saying, but do you understand the opportunity and really get that done? So that's clearly mm -hmm. what's happening a lot these days. How do you see the timelines of the leaders that you talk to on, on implementing AI? Uh, again, the difference between the high growth and the low growth uh, uh, companies and the leaders in the high growth companies have uh, a very, very high sense of urgency talking about the next 12 months when uh, it's about uh, applying AI in a different form, in a more uh, extensive form. Interestingly, this high sense of urgency um, is related to uh, certain challenges uh, around the rapid change that uh, they yeah. see as a challenge. And the second one, even more important, I think, is the culture transformation, yeah. Yeah. bringing their people along. Huh? Yeah. What would be your practical re recommendations yeah. to, to senior executives? I think AI starts with data. So whatever you do, you need to have your data house in order. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you have that kind of data model and all the things that, that you know are needed mm -hmm. to get to AI. I think the second thing is that you just cannot throw AI in your organization and think, hope things will work. So coming back to your point, culture change. 
super critical for people to get it and understand it and that they are mm -hmm. empowered mm -hmm. to implement it based by board decisions because these things are now board decisions. So if you think about AI reasoning over data and then giving insights and then decision making that's happening, I think that's what you see now more and more in various industries. So mm -hmm. if you think retail, you know, AI is not being applied for, let's say, supply chain optimization or real-time price pricing in, in the retail market. Um, banking, how do you think about decision making on, let's say, fraud detection? So big data and really the right AI coming to insights to say, okay, where does the fraud happen and what are the patterns that, that we can recognize? If you are a company with a lot of call centers, how can you apply intelligent agents that actually will make your call agents more productive with 30%? And then, of course, getting to the next level of how can I get those agents to have the daily recommender on mm -hmm. the highest propensity that you have based on machine learning? So a lot of great examples, but change is happening in with leadership, culture, and with technology, and these three things together, then things start to really work.